There's been a lot of talk about different coins lately. Some of them go to the moon and produce very big gains for the people that bought in early, and others go to the opposite of the moon. They go to the floor, and then through the floor, past hell, into the world of Blockbuster and Beanie Babies, where all worthless investments go to die. But what if I told you that there are coins out there, there are cryptocurrencies whose values don't really go up or down? They are a thing, and today we're going to take a look at some of these stable coins and what they are used for. So a lot of cryptocurrencies, they were originally created with the idea that they would be a medium of exchange, decentralized money. In fact, this is one of the purposes that Bitcoin, the OG crypto, was supposed to fulfill. But as I've discussed in several of my other crypto videos, the whole medium of exchange part doesn't work very well when the value of your coins could increase or decrease by a significant amount within hours or days. Uh, like imagine if you were to buy a sports car with Bitcoin last month, right? So let's see, on January the 17th, Bitcoin was priced uh, it looks like at about $35,000, right? So you were to buy a sports car back then. Well, now your same Bitcoins would be worth $52,000, right? If you had one Bitcoin. Uh, so that's about a 50% appreciation in the past month and you would have bought a depreciating asset with it. You'd probably be pretty pissed off. So because of this, people tend to hold their Bitcoins instead of actually spending it, which defeats the whole purpose of it being a medium of exchange. And this is where the stable coins come in. So essentially, these coins are an attempt to create a cryptocurrency that has a very stable value, uh, and usually they're pegged to a fiat currency like dollars or euros. Uh, for example, this stable coin, Tether, it's worth one US dollar. And even if we zoom out, right, if we take a look at its price history, uh, we can see that there. this is always true. There's some very small, very temporary dips that happen in it. Uh, which immediately get corrected. But we can see that it always stays relatively stable. Um, it stays within, I'd say maybe five cents or so. So using a stable coin, it kind of allows you to have some of the same freedoms that crypto gives you, right? Mainly not having to deal with a whole lot of regulation that regular currency has. Um, and you can also get lower exchange rates with it a lot of the time while providing the same kind of stability that we at least pretend that fiat currency has. Now, despite the stability, Stable coins don't really get used as a medium of exchange that often, uh, at least not by online merchants. I don't even know any off the top of my head that actually accept Tether um, or even PAX or any other uh, stable coins for the most part. But one thing that these stable coins are really useful for is converting volatile cryptos like Bitcoin into a stable currency on crypto only exchanges. So some exchanges, uh, they only allow you to deal with cryptocurrencies, right? Like they haven't passed the regulations or they don't want to go through the regulations for you to be able to uh, like connect it to your bank account or whatever. So the only way that you can really buy in is if you trade some crypto from a different exchange like Coinbase into this one uh, and then swap it out for like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or you can use these stable coins if you want to have something that is essentially like money, like if you don't want to buy into a certain cryptocurrency right away. Now, it's important to point out that this does not let you avoid capital gains tax on crypto. Uh, the IRS, they treat converting crypto, uh, converting it into like any stable coin or really any cryptocurrency at all, the same as selling it. So don't buy stable coins for the purposes of tax evasion. If anything, buy Monero for that. Uh, now, another benefit is that you can exchange stable currencies to different exchanges and then buy into other cryptocurrencies on them. So, for example, let's say that you mostly buy crypto on Coinbase, right? Like maybe you buy Bitcoin and Ethereum for the most part. But then you hear about some shiny new meme coin on r slash crypto moonshots, uh, which, of course, isn't going to be listed on any of the major exchanges. You can just transfer some Tether uh, or whatever coins, stable coins are available on there to the other exchange. And then usually you pay a lower fee than 
if you were to transfer money, well, you wouldn't be able to transfer money in this case. Uh, if you were to transfer like Bitcoin or Ethereum or something else like that. So right now, stable coins are pretty much just used by crypto speculators as a more efficient way to convert crypto into something that is stable or to transfer funds between exchanges. Um, but how do they work? So how can a cryptocurrency have such a stable price that doesn't fluctuate like crazy? Well, first, you have to do what all cryptos try to do, which is to actually convince people that your coin has value so that they'll buy into it. So usually a good way to do this uh, for a coin is to serve some kind of a specific purpose. So you have Ethereum, for example, that has the smart contracts. Uh, Monero, it has excellent privacy. In the case of USDT or Tether, they just hold US dollars that are equal to the amount of USDT in supply. So one USDT uh, actually does equal $1 as long as that actually remains true and they actually do have those funds in their account. Uh, there's other cryptos like DGX token, which are said to be backed by gold. Um, you can have a coin really that's backed by anything that has a relatively stable value. It could be oil, it could be uranium, as long as the company that is issuing the coin actually has those assets. Uh, now, another way to make the coin stable is supply manipulation. So a company, when, when they do this, what they'll do is they'll write up a smart contract that automatically increases or decreases the supply of a coin that's in circulation depending on its price. So the price of an asset, whether it's gold, crypto, or a stock, it's naturally going to increase if it's in high demand, meaning that a lot of people are buying it. And when this happens, the smart contract is going to kick in and start issuing new coins to alleviate some of the pressure from that demand. And then if the price of the coin falls due to low demand, the smart contract is going to start taking coins out of supply, out of circulation. Uh, and coins that do this, they essentially have the smart contract acting as a central bank that is creating and destroying money as necessary to keep the price stable. And then finally, there's stable coins that basically act like a crypto ETF. So what they'll do is they'll buy into several different cryptocurrencies and then they're going to issue their own crypto based off of the value of their crypto holdings. And one of the cool things about this is that you can actually verify the assets that a company claims to have on the blockchain instead of just trusting that you know, they have a bank account full of money or a warehouse full of gold or oil that you can't actually tour. And this is one of the common criticisms of Tether that, you know, they don't regularly publish their holdings. So people don't know if they really do have a dollar for every single coin that exists in a bank account somewhere. Uh, however, uh, crypto itself, it isn't really a stable medium of exchange, right? Like it goes up and down. Uh, well, it goes up for the most part, but you know, up and down. So these companies, they usually have to hold something like 140% or more of their claimed crypto value uh, in order to make up for any dips that are in their portfolios. So to finish off, are stable coins a good idea? Is it smart to buy into them? And is it smart to hold them? Uh, the thing is that pegging one currency to another, it's never really lasted that long. Like there's several examples of peg currencies failing throughout recent history. You've got the US dollar no longer being pegged to gold. You've got the Swiss franc losing its peg to the euro or the Chinese yuan losing its peg to the US dollar. And all of these governments, like these are, you know, in the case of like China or America, these are big governments that failed to maintain their currency backing. So what's to stop these stable coins from losing their backing as well uh, when you just have a company doing it? And also because the stable coins rely on a company or an algorithm to govern their pegs, they aren't really decentralized. So it's almost like they're not a real cryptocurrency. And the solution that stable coins are providing, like in terms of, you know, what does a cryptocurrency do? What is its objective value in terms of what it accomplishes? Uh, it isn't really that significant. You know, as the market cap of various coins grow, they're going to start having more stability. And another problem that comes with stable coins is the fact that the companies that are behind them, they're essentially trying to create an asset that is gonna mimic legal tender without any major oversight. And that's not something that most governments are going to stand for. And it can get the company shut down. And this has already happened with stable coins like Basis. So I don't really see any gains from 
you know, stable coins, like there's, you, there's really no point in holding them because obviously there's not going to be any gains to them. Uh, and I don't see any long-term use for them. You know, in current day, they are useful for exchanging funds between different exchanges. But as long-term holding, you're going to be much better off with Bitcoin, Ethereum, or hell, even fiat compared to a stable coin.